Okay, mm -hmm. ready? Uh, Mitchell Kobernick, I live on, on South Shore in Gulf Harbors. Um, I've got a couple of points that I, I just wanted to make. Um, the first one is constructive criticism. Uh, when the notice was published for this hearing, uh, it stated in the notice that documents pertinent to the hearing would be available for review in Land of Lakes. Um, Diane, who you'll be hearing from shortly, um, a week after the published notice, went to Land of Lakes to review the documents, and nobody there knew what she was talking about. Um, eventually, she did get those documents emailed to her. Um, but my point is that it would, it would behoove the county to make sure that on the date that these notices are published that states the documents will be available, somebody makes sure that those documents are actually available for review. Um, so that's my first constructive criticism. The second point I want to talk about is just MSBUs in general, which, which is the funding mechanism for this <coughs> dredging. Um, MSBUs, by their nature, are regressive taxes. And by that, I mean that everybody pays the same dollar amount. Somebody who has a $100,000 home is going to pay the same dollar amount when they're assessed as someone who has a million-dollar home. And we do have some low-income people in the area, so that seems fundamentally unfair as a funding mechanism. Just MSBUs in general, and this one in particular, would, that seems to be somewhat of an unfair mechanism to, to assess people where uh, people who are going to be benefiting the most, the higher-priced homes on the canals, are going to pay the same amount as people who may be further inland who are not going to have as direct a benefit from the dredging. So that's something that I would like to point out that maybe, some, maybe there's a tweak that can be made in the MSBU to try to alleviate some of the disproportionate taxation that the lower income people are going to be suffering from. Um, since I have time, one last point. Um, I live in Gulf Harbors, and uh, the last report that was done, the GBA report, specifically was not making any recommendation for dredging in Gulf Harbors. I realize this may not be the final report. There may be a, a subsequent report being issued. But if those are the recommendations that are going to be followed where Gulf Harbors will not be getting any dredging, then I would submit that Gulf Harbor should not be part of the MSBU. It should be carved out. If we're not getting a benefit from the dredging, I hope that's not the case, but I do want to just lay down this marker that if Gulf Harbors is not going to be receiving any direct benefit by Gulf Harbors being dredged, I don't believe it should be part of the MSBU boundaries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, wait, um, can the count, do you want to correct what might be a misinformation? We will, we will go through that when staff comes back up after the, like okay, we normally great. do. All right, thanks. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm short. <laughs> You're good. Uh, my name is Diane Kovenick, 5001 South Shore, Gulf Harbors. I understand that it does not matter what I say here. That will change your minds. But for the record, your legacy will be a commission that has ruined our beautiful, quiet counties by overbuilding and overtaxing your citizens. Under your commission, we now have three separate school taxes, two separate fire rescue bonds to repay, two separate jail bonds to repay, two separate parks and recs bonds to repay, two separate library bonds to repay, and not to mention the stormwater that was increased 61% a few years ago. Under your commission, you have removed the county's responsibility for safe roads, first with paving assessments, and now you intend to create MSTU for this. Need street lights for safety? No problem. Street light assessments. <coughs> Your commission has used the novel MSBU tax for the purchase of land at overinflated prices by saying it will benefit the area. What do our regular property taxes pay for? Well. My research shows increases in salaries of elected officials, salary increases for Pasco County employees, renovations for this county's buildings and others, building and maintenance for pet projects such as miles for bike trails, sports complex, ice hockey, Sun West, the purchase of wetlands credits to allow more building, lobbyist, outside attorneys for defending the county, and lots of money on various studies for pet projects. The explosion of homeless in Pasco should give you pause for creating another tax. <clears throat> the dredging cost is unknown. 
the contract has not been given. And most of all, the cost of your constituents to your constituents is unknown. Please vote no until you get your facts straight. It is premature. You don't even know if HB 1061 will even allow you to dredge in certain areas. Thank you. OK, I'm going to call the next three on the list. The first one is Melissa Horn, followed by Mark Reidiger, followed by Margie Bradley. Hello there, Melissa Horn, 13704 Janita Drive in Hudson. Along with Commissioner Oakley, this has been an agenda since I started coming to these meetings in 2017. And here we are talking about the same thing. Um, I totally agree that Hudson Beach Channel needs to be done. And I think it needs to be done before Gulf Harbors. Hudson Beach supports eight different residential neighborhoods. It also supports three marinas, a public boat ramp at Robert Strickland Park, a Freedom Boat Club at Port Hudson, and the Pasco County Sheriff's Office and the Marine Patrol. My question is, yes, it does all cost money, and I agree with that, but are those businesses going to pay in to this project as well that utilize that channel? I'd also like to know, it was mentioned back in 2017, um, that there was money set aside from the BP oil spill for this project. Where's that? Is this all funding going to come from the taxpayers? I also want to mention that, along with what the previous speaker said, rising costs of those living on the water is going up. Our homeowners insurance doubled last year. Um, according to a WFLA report, um, in the last three years, Florida homeowners insurance rates have gone up 100% and are expected to go up another 40 and 50% in June. Our flood insurance rates are outrageous, with another increase expected in April. These costs alone are killing the dream of living on the water and pushing people out. Not just working people, but these senior citizens and those on fixed incomes. So my question is, again, what is this tax assessment going to cost us <coughs> to have this project done? And I, you know, based on the slide, 25 to 65 million dollars, that's a huge gap. Like we need some concrete numbers and some concrete costs to the individual taxpayers. <coughs> Thank you. Mark Rediger, 12705 Second Island, Hudson. I first started following this at our first meeting with the chairman, 2015 at Sea Pines. It's been a long process. We avoided 2022 like the plague. 2021 in October, our chairman says, nothing will happen to this project during 2022. Here we are in 2023. Now we're talking about an MSBU. Originally we talked about BP money and other funding from the state and federal grants to help us with this. Seems like that's all gone. I'm curious about the accounting of expenditures for the BP funds. Where did they go? Does ever anybody know? We also have runoff issues from Bear Creek that fill our channels. That's created by DOT cleaning of Bear Creek. <coughs> be responsible for all those problems. Thank you. Hello, my name's Margie Bradley, and I'll be quite frank with you. I'm near deaf, so I heard nothing people said. You're not closed caption here. Um, I'm a owner in Gulf Harbors condominium, and I went on Friday to your infrastructure office to get a lot of information, which was presented today, but was not available on Friday. So some of the things I had to say were not appropriate, but um, I'm actually opposed to this project. Um, Gulf Harbors has um, a seawall, no docks, 
There's I counted 75 properties across the way that had docks or, or on the seawall. I lived on an island before, and the tide goes in, the tide goes out, the canals go away, the storms come in, they damage the work you've done. I think the idea of this district is kind of on the ridiculous side. I thought it was a jump ahead to form the district and, and charge the people in the tax. But I didn't realize there was a meeting before. I've checked your uh, websites, and uh, there's no attachments to anything for me to see. And I think in a time of runaway inflation, this is a burden to the homeowners who, um, when you add it to their tax bills. And this is an affordable housing complex in Gulf Harbors. And uh, the complex struggles, to, it was built in 1960, and it struggles to keep up with the insurance increase, the reserves that are inadequate for the inflation, the cost of everything's going up, the income, your in constitu constituents is not increasing adequately to cover these costs. And the commission has allowed the growth in Pasco to become runaway. Um, infrastructure for roads, water, parks, utilities, waste, and the incinerator can't keep up. For one, the smell for the sewage treatment plant on Parkway and Land Lakes, near your veterans' home is so bad. And is, I know that it's overused. I know it's a countywide problem. There's other treatment plants in the same problem. And I think we need to look at those kind of issues before we worry about somebody's boat being able to go in and out of the, the canals. And I'm opposed to it. Okay, thank you. I'm going to call the next three. The first one is Mike Leg, followed by, I think it says Del Chichil and Ann Toretto Chichil. Okay, thank you. So my name is Mike Legg. I live at 6035 Sea Ranch Drive in the Gulf Island condos, Unit 600. Um, I'm, I'm here somewhat representing the whole group. We've got some current officers of the boards and previous board members uh, from Gulf Island here. And I'd like to um, ask that we please that you please vote yes to start the process of considering adopting an MSBU to fund the construction efforts to clean the canals and improve water quality in a fiscally responsible manner in our area. So I would agree with the uh, request in terms of the Gulf oil uh, spill that took place some time ago. Uh, it was our understanding that money would be allocated um, for improvement of the waterways in Hudson, and I'm not sure where that ended up. So again, make sure we're fiscally responsible. I would also like to ask from a detail standpoint, Mr. Grant, do you know if Gulf Island, the lagoon, and the two historic channels that are on the Gulf next to Gulf Island, are they included in this uh, dredging process? Just, let, just go ahead and answer the question if you do it quickly. Sure. Um, the, the lagoon is not part of the dredging plans at this time. Okay. So I guess I would like to have further discussion and consideration on that then. Uh, we have 324 units uh, within Gulf Island, and if we are going to be a part of that tax assessment, uh, which I expect we will be, then certainly that lagoon needs to be considered as well from a dredging standpoint. Is there a way I could follow up on that later? Yes, with Nathaniel. Thank you. Okay, so the next three I have are Albert Hiller, Dave Mueller, and Aggie Pernifo. I apologize for hurting that name. 